Hi, welcome back. In the last episode, we were looking at the Pythagorean theorem, right triangles, and it was a lot of work to calculate one of the missing side links. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there were going, oh dear Lord, please let there be a shortcut. Well, there is, and this is the episode for it. We're looking at special right triangles. We have two of them, and we're going to start with the 45, 45, 90 degree special right triangle. This is a right triangle that has, as its measurements, a 45, a 45, and a 90 degree angle. Because it has a 90 degree angle, it is a right triangle. And so just like with the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to look at the hypotenuse. And then the other two side legs are A and B. However, because we have two congruent angles on the acute angles, right here, these are congruent, it means that these side leg measurements are also congruent. And so the pattern is this. Whatever the measurement of this leg is, the hypotenuse is going to be the measure of that leg times the square root of 2. Don't overthink it, just whatever the measurement of the leg is, the hypotenuse is that number times the square root of 2. If you need to see how that works, here it is in Pythagorean theorem, and here it is with some numbers. <coughs> Let's go ahead and do some examples so we can see how this works. We're going to look at number 1 first. Okay. Start off your example by identifying your right angle and then identifying your hypotenuse. Now according to my pattern up on top, since this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, in order to find the measure of the hypotenuse, you need to know the measure of the leg because the measure of the hypotenuse is the measure of the leg times the square root of 2. The measure of, this, of the leg in this case is 8, and so the hypotenuse is 8 times the square root of 2. No, you don't have to put this in the calculator. No, you don't need a decimal. Yes, this is the correct and final answer. Let's do another one very similar. Scoot over to number 3 on your study guide. Notice again how we have a right angle, which means this is our hypotenuse. We have one angle of 45 degrees, because we have one angle 45 degrees, triangle angle sum tells us that these have to add up to 180, which means this is also 45 degrees. And we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Here are the legs, and according to our pattern, it says if I'm trying to find the measure of the hypotenuse, I'm going to take the measure of a leg, and I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 2. According to the information I've been given, the measure of a leg is 4, and so this hypotenuse is 4 times the square root of 2. That's it. Don't overthink it. Let's look now at number 2. Here is my right triangle, which means this is my hypotenuse. With my hypotenuse being given, I have to remember that the pattern says the measure of the hypotenuse is the measure of the leg times the square root of 2. Here is the measure of the leg, and that's actually what I'm trying to find. So I need to figure out what number do I need to multiply by the square root of 2 to give me 3 times the square root of 2. Hopefully it's very easy to see that the leg's length is 3. I'm going to go ahead and scoop my paper up a little bit, and I want to walk you through this in algebra just so that you can see how this works. So it's given to me that the measure of the hypotenuse by the pattern is the leg, leg, length of the leg times the square root of 2. But I'm told that the measure of the hypotenuse is 3 times the square root of 2. Oops, I said 2, I wrote 3. Sorry. Now I need to get rid of the square root 2 on this side to leave the measure of the leg by itself. So I'm going to divide this side by the square root of 2. 
Yes, I can do that. The square root of 2 is just a number like any other. It just happens to have a bunch of decimals. It also is not 0, which means I can totally divide by it. Dividing both sides by the square root of 2, notice how they're going to cancel here. And, oh, look, they cancel here, leaving me with L, the length of the leg, is equal to 3, exactly what I put here. We're going to go ahead and skip over to number 6 and take a look at it from there and try to do this one more or less in our heads. Find the right angle. There is your hypotenuse, which means this is the measure of one of your legs. My pattern says that the measure of the hypotenuse is given by the measure of the leg times the square root of 2. My hypotenuse is told to me to be 24 times the square root of 2, and so the measure of my leg must be 24. Now the process is a little different on number 5, because on number 5, the measure of your hypotenuse doesn't have the square root of 2 already in it. Instead, it's a whole number. So we have to figure out what we need to do in order to have a square root of 2 show up. That way, we can then figure out what number multiplied by the square root of 2 gives me 16. I'm going to employ my extra sheet of paper over here so I can do some work on the side. All right, I'm looking at 16. I want this to have some sort of 2 in it by multiplication. So if I think of 16 as 8 times 2, I've got a 2 that then maybe I can turn into a square root. Since I want this to turn into a square root, I have to think, what is 2 the square root of? Well, 2 is the square root of 4. And 4 I can rewrite as 2 times 2. Remember from earlier, whenever we have a radical with multiplications inside, I can split it up into two different radicals. And I can do that at the multiplication and only when there's multiplication. Now I'm, if I recall back to my pattern, the measure of the hypotenuse is the measure of the leg times the square root of 2. Here I have my square root of 2, which leaves me with the measure of the leg, 8 times the square root of 2.